I'm Pat Duda. Today we're going to introduce you to the concept of a sequence and specifically focus on two types of sequences, arithmetic sequences, which grow by adding a number to it, and geometric sequences, which grow by multiplying by a number. So let's look at a definition for a sequence. A sequence is, is a type of function where the domain consists of natural numbers. You might recall that natural numbers begin at 1 and move on upwards. Uh, the range consists of any real number. There are two types, overall types of sequences, finite sequences, which have a specific number of elements, and infinite sequences, which go on forever. The two major types of sequences we are going to focus on are arithmetic sequ sequences and geometric sequences. Arithmetic sequences grow by addition. Uh, each term, if you add another number to it called the common difference, you get to the next term. For example, for example, let's say 3 is the first term and the common difference is 5. So to get to the next term, I would add 5. 3 plus 5 is 8. So the first term would be 3, the next term would be 8. And then I would take 8 and add 5 to it to get the next term, 13, and then add 5 to get the next term, 18. So each time we're adding that common difference of 5, and so on. Common differences can also be negative, and so the sequences can also get smaller. That's an arithmetic sequence. On a graph, it looks like points on a line. Now it is a set of what are called discrete individual points. It's not continuous like a line, but it does have a linear sort of uh, shape. A geometric sequence is where terms are separated by a common ratio. We get to the next term by multiplication. So if the first term was 3, that would be a sub 1, and then the common ratio was 2, each time we're going to multiply the term by 2. So the next term, a sub 2, would equal 3 times 2 equals 6. And then the next term, a sub 3, would equal 6 times 2 equals 12. So the terms would be 3, 6, 12, and so on. When you graph this sort of sequence, you get an exponential looking shape. Let's look at a couple of sequences to determine whether they're arithmetic. Now recall that arithmetic sequences grow by a constant amount called the common difference. So what we have to do to test a sequence to see if it's arithmetic is to see is there a common difference. So we look at the differences between each of the terms. So we have negative 3, negative 8, negative 13, negative 23, dot, dot, dot. Because of the dot, 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 by the way, we know this is an infinite uh, sequence. So we're going to test. Uh, the difference between uh, negative 3 and negative 8, negative 8 minus negative 3 is equal to negative 8 plus 3 or negative 5. So negative 5 is the difference between these two numbers. If we run the same test on negative 13 and negative 8, we get also get negative 5. And then if we run the next test on negative 13 or negative 23, and negative 13, we get negative 23 plus uh, 13, which is negative 10. So it is not a common difference. The first two terms are differing by 5, but the third term is not. So no common difference, therefore not arithmetic. So let's look at the second example. We have negative 8, negative 2, 4, 10. Numbers are growing. Let's see how much they're growing by. If they're growing by a constant amount, uh, analogous to the slope, by the way, in a linear equation, then we do have an arithmetic sequence. So uh, negative 2 minus negative 8 is negative 2 plus 8, positive 6. Same thing for 4 and negative 2. 4 minus negative 2, positive 6. 10 minus 4, positive 6. And this is going to continue with this pattern. Um, notice they do have that common difference, and that equals 6. Yes, it is arithmetic. Let's take the arithmetic sequence negative 8, negative 6, negative 4, and so on, and analyze it. First, we want to find the next four terms of the sequence. Okay, so since we know it's an arithmetic sequence, we need to find that common difference. And we're going to get that 
common difference by subtracting the terms from each other. So negative 6 minus negative 8 gives me negative 6 plus 8 gives me positive 2. Negative 4 uh, minus 6. Negative 4 minus negative 6. Negative 4 plus 6 is going to give me positive 2. So I need to find the next four terms. This is a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3. I need to find a sub 4, a sub 5, and a sub 6. Well, since the common difference is plus 2, what I'm going to do is add 2 to each of those terms. So if I have negative 4 and add 2 to it, I get negative 4 plus 2, negative 2. I take that negative 2 and add 2 more to it, I get 0. So the fifth term, a sub 5, is 0. I take 0, add 2 to it, get the next term of 2. So the next two terms are negative 2, 0, and positive 2. So let's take those terms and graph them. The way we graph a sequence is the input, or the domain, are the numbers 1, 2, 3, and so on being the term number. The value of the term is the output or range. In this case, these numbers that we calculated and were given, negative 8, negative 6, negative 4, negative 2, 0, and 2. And we'll take it one more step and calculate even another term, a seventh term. We'd add 2 to 2 and get 4. So these coordinate pairs are what you plot it's just like making a table, but now these are coordinate pairs that we can then plot on a graph. And if we plot those on something like this, we'll see like 1, negative 8 is our first point, 2, negative 6, and so on, increasing by 2 every time. And you'll see very similar, uh, the common difference is very much like a slope if it were a line. Now we're going to use a marching band example to uh, find a specific term in an arithmetic sequence. During a routine, a marching band marches in rows. There's one performer in the first row, three in the second row, five in the third row, and so on. So we want to know, this is obviously a pretty big band, what is going to be the number of performers in the 20th row? Now you could get that just by going through numerically and adding the common difference each time until you did this 20 times, but let's try We're going to try to uh, avoid that. We're going to try and write this as a function. So we know that a sub 1 is 1. There's one performer in the first row. In each additional row, we need to find that common difference. How many marching band members or performers are added each time? Well, 3 minus 1 is 2. 5 minus 3 is also 2. The common difference, d, is equal to 2. So the way we're going to write a, an arithmetic sequence as a function is very similar to a line. So we're going to start at 1. That's going to be somewhat like our, our y-intercept. a sub n is going to be equal to that first term, a sub 1, plus a common difference times the number of terms minus 1. Because to get to the 20th row, for example, we're going to go up not 20 times, we're going to go up 19 times. That's why it has to be the number minus 1. So, for example, to find a sub 20, we're going to have a sub 1, which is 1, plus um, the 20 minus 1, we're going up 19 rows, times that common difference of 2. So it would be 1, plus 19 times 2, because 19 is 20 minus 1, so it would be 39. There would be 39 band members in that 20th row. Now let's look at geometric sequences. We're going to determine whether uh, this sequence is geometric, and recall that geometric sequences are uh, individual elements are multiplied to get to the next element. So we're looking for this common ratio that it's multiplied by. So to do that common ratio, instead of subtracting to find the common difference, we're going to do a ratio. 20 divided by 8 will tell us what 8 is multiplied by to get 20. 20 over 8 is equal to 10 over 4 or 2.5. Okay. So then we're going to take the next one, 50 over 20. Well, 50 over 20 
is 5 over 2, also 2.5. So far, this is looking like it's geometric. Let's do one last term here, 125 divided by 50. That's equal to, if we divide it by 25, 5 over 2, also 2.5. So our common ratio is 2.5. And indeed, this is geometric. Let's go ahead and graph this. To do that, let's go ahead and get a couple of more terms, though. To, to get the next couple of terms, we're going to go ahead and multiply 125 times the common ratio of 2.5, and that's going to give us 312.5. Then if we take that number and multiply it by 2.5, we'll get the next term in the sequence. 312.5 times 2.5 is going to give us 781.25. So those are the next two terms. And if we graph those as coordinate pairs, we're going to get this table. Each term is the input. Uh, the value of that term is the output, each increasing by multiplying by 2.5. So if we were to graph these points, we would see that they do make a very exponential pattern. Now, it's important to note that they're not continuous. Uh, you know, here we have 1, 8, 2, 20, 3, 50, and so on. They're not continuous. Uh, but it is an exponential sort of shape. We've taken an introductory look at sequences and relating them to functions. Arithmetic sequences which grow by a common difference added to the terms, and geometric sequences which grow by a common ratio of multiplying by the terms.